Uh, good morning. My name is Richard Jolk. I have the pleasure of chairing this this morning. Uh, it's always a little bit hectic trying to get everybody together and the bios and everything else that needs to be done. Uh, but uh, it's a great session and uh, just good information, good people that are trying to give it. We're, we're moving as best as we can. So anyway, this morning I'm presenting on what I feel are really the fundamental components of mineral property valuation. Uh, there's a lot of detail, as you can hear, and regulations that are required and things that have to be done to, to do it properly. The report writing itself, all of these things are really quite important. But there's some fundamental things that I think everybody needs to think about when you're doing an appraisal like that. Uh, an appraisal or evaluation or even really giving an opinion of value. So, uh, first off, I believe that uh, there's five main components. I'm going to discuss those in a minute or two here. Uh, there's some factors that are obviously more important than others, and there's also uh, a lot of uh, factors that, that are actually not mutually exclusive of one another, so they interact, so to speak. Uh, this is a mine, uh, uh, Garrington. Uh, you can see the, the little river running from, from south to north there. Uh, this is mined by Arco years ago. But sometime, as a mineral appraiser, you might be called on to try and put a value on this. This has been shut down and been mined by Arco years ago. Uh, but there's a company, uh, Clotera Minerals, that have been looking at trying to remine it and uh, do a little bit of work uh, on some, some oxides uh, off the side. So uh, you can see there's a lot involved with how do you get, you know, how do you get to the point where you can put a value on something like that. The five issues that I usually consider most important are listed here. Uh, of course, you have the reserve itself, the resources, the reserve. What's the deposit? What do you actually have? What are you working with? Uh, what's its size? What's its shape? Uh, how is it laying in the ground? How deep is it? How close to the surface? Uh, uh, the next issue, of course, then comes up is where are you at? What's, what's the climate like? Uh, uh, are you close to power or water or infrastructure or deep water ports or, or airfields? So the deposit, where are you at? Uh, and then really the status of project development. How much work has been done? How much drilling has been prepared? Uh, how complete are the studies? Uh, have there been investigations uh, such as uh, are the bridges in order and in fact to carry the type of weight you would need for a gyro head? Um, all of these things have to be considered when you're starting to look at the technical issues behind uh, mine evaluation and development. Uh, you know, really right to mine is probably uh, more important or as important as the deposit itself. Uh, I put it here because these things kind of in this order get a little bit more um, in some cases, they get more nebulous, and I'll share that with you a little later, why, why I would say right to mine might be a little bit more nebulous. Usually right to mine, the basics are, is there a, a, a private property owner, or is it public property, which, uh, which is, a, say, an unpatented uh, uh, mining claim? Uh, is there some sort of a, a rent where you're leasing it from the state or from an individual? Anyway, right to mine is obviously very important. And then finally, management prowess. You can look at properties and, and people are claiming that they're worth hundreds of millions of dollars, but if you don't have any management in place that really knows what they're doing, uh, you really can't give it an appraised value at the full price of maybe what it would be worth is if you had a, a, a strong team that was, was preparing to actually do the development work on it. So, uh, mineral deposits, the basics, funds, grades, resources, reserves, uh, ground conditions, hydrology, surface and subsurface, and uh, here we say data valuation appraisal. This is where appraisal gets back in again. What is it worth today? Um, people can look at what it was worth before, they can speculate on what it's worth down the road, but really what it's worth today is what appraisal is all about. Uh, I put up a couple of slides here, they're a little fuzzy probably because the topic itself to me is a little fuzzy too, geology, but but uh, different types of deposits, you have hydrothermal and you have magnetic deposits. And uh, a lot of information on these slides about how people look at this. But the more you know about this, the more you can understand what that deposit might be worth or what, what type of potential extensions there might be. I don't know many operating properties where they're still not doing exploration drilling five or ten years into the, into the project. Most of, these, most of these projects have years and years of exploration drilling continuing after they're still in operation. And that can be worth a lot of money and a lot of appraised value. Okay, logistics, infrastructure, etc., elevation, climate, access to skilled labor, um, water, of course, is important, and it depends on if you're in a, in a positive water balance or a negative water balance situation. 
uh, positive water balances like the Philippines and the tropical regions of South America where you got way too much water than what you need and you have to try and deal with that. Negative water balances like Nevada or Arizona, where you're trying to hold on to your water and you're grateful for whatever water and water rights you have. Um, highway access, deep water port, fuel costs. Um, worked on a project recently where when an appraisal was done, uh, the cost of fuel in Venezuela was five cents a liter. Uh, and so, so very inexpensive. It's still cheap there right now, as I understand. Um, when we think of logistics and infrastructure, think of how massive something like this can be. This is real close by here. It's a Kennecott uh, smelter, uh, just on the south side of uh, the lake and, and the rest of town here. But uh, obviously, there's a lot involved in the in the power and in the water and the, the transport systems and access and everything else that go with that. Project valuation development. You have drilling, sampling, data verification, mine planning and scheduling, the process development, infrastructure components again, and sizing. So it's not just having the infrastructure there, but how big of a transformer do I need? How big of a substation? How big do the water pumps have to be, et cetera? You have to start thinking about how many people have to live there or live in the town to, to actually work the facility. Um, areas of concern like acid rock drainage, uh, enclosure. Uh, again, the competence of the people that are doing the work and putting it together, and then how robust and resilient the project is. These are all important. As far as exploration goes, we talked about drilling a little bit. This is Cortez, and you can see that they put a lot of pinholes in it, um, looking for, for what they got. Uh, but anyway, this would be typical. This would be something you would see, or you might not see. It just depends uh, you know, on the deposit itself. I, I pulled some... Uh, some slides from Wrangell. This is just to show how they go ahead and they, they do the block modeling. They actually come up with zones that have higher grades and lower grades. Here they put in a rough representation of what a mine plan might be. As a mine plan, this is the same uh, deposit in Sambali. And uh, you can see how they said, well, our pressure station is going to be here. They have some sensitive uh, ranges off to the side where the pressure area is and it's always level. But they start defining it in terms of engineering terms, how they're going to ultimately develop it. So it starts with the deposit, it goes through how you're going to develop it, then you start looking at, uh, um, you know, equipment lists and, and uh, duration and the schedule, how long it's going to take to build this stuff and, and prepare it. And this is all important to, you know, depending on where you come in on a project as an appraiser, as a valuer, it depends on how much of this has been complete. And so in a big way, it, it, you're saying, well, gee, if this isn't complete yet, you really don't have a plan yet. So it, it's not really worth the value of maybe a projection like from a 43101 study necessarily, where they say it will be worth this much when we get here. As an appraiser, you have to say, yeah, but it's only worth this much right now. That's the point. Uh, this is just again to show the process plans. So the basics of these are basically, uh, you know, design criteria, flow sheet, mass balance, major equipment list, one line diagram for electricals, and then a site plan. And with that, you got 90% of the way where you gotta go. Uh, Acid rock drainage, common problem out there, but do people have plans for closure? Do they have some idea how they're going to deal with this stuff? Because if they have a good plan for closure, they're a lot farther down the road in terms of their appraised value. If they don't have a plan, well, the, the, the value of the property is not quite worth as much because they haven't thought this out yet. This is just a very standard set of plans for encapsulating acid generating material that they use in the industry. So I thought I'd Put it up there to show you this is the type of type of work in detail that it ultimately gets to. Um, project status and timing. Uh, you, you have to start looking at uh, where are they at? Is, a, is it a, just a, a opportunity assessment? Is it, is it a pre-feasibility study? Uh, have they awarded any engineering procurement and construction contracts or have they awarded any uh, uh, actual, have they, have they awarded uh, contracts to buy equipment or is it manifested on site ready to be delivered or is it just all still somebody's dream on the back of an envelope? So uh, there's, there's, you have to look at what stage and status of development there is to try and come up with what the value of the property is. It has a lot to do with it. Uh, ultimately, the right to mine, uh, along with the land position that I mentioned earlier, contracts and agreements. Uh, permitting is part of the right to mine. And uh, sometimes permitting can be very difficult. And then you start traveling around the world, and you might have a lot of problems in, in third world countries and second world countries and places you thought were first world countries. Um, I know Australia right now is, is still uh, totally uh, uh, 
I'm, I'm going to say against, but they, they don't uh, want any type of radioactive uh, minerals mined there. Um, not only uranium, but they, they have some monazite in some of their beach sands that they process. It's a uh, uranium thorium rare earth element phosphate called monazite. And uh, there's a chance to take this and actually process it there and get rare earth elements. But at the same time, if it, if it has radioactive content, they don't want to deal with it. So very interesting, uh, depending on where you're working, what could be done. Here in the States, we have an interesting one. Uh, it's called a pebble. And, uh, of course, when you start seeing like this in the cartoonists in the area where you're working, you would think you might be having a problem with your project. Uh, so, uh, obviously, it is, uh, it is uh, quite a ways up in the hills from where, uh, from where this salmon ground is, but at the same time, it's the largest uh, salmon breeding bay. Uh, I've never been up there, really, but it's a beautiful area from what I understand. I think Bob Cram flew over it, and we saw some pictures out a year or so back. But... Uh, Anyway, this is a problem. And you say, well, this is kind of a cartoon. What does it mean? Okay, then you start looking at this. And you go, well, gee, there's a lot of people that you know, really don't want this to happen. So how does that affect project value? You look at a project where they've drilled it. They've done the technical work. The local residents are interested in the jobs. Maybe they're, they're native landowners. They're, they're first, uh, uh, I, mean, I can't remember the term in Canada, First Nations. Uh, so you have people there that are very interested maybe in having the mine go in, but then you have other people in the area that are not. And you always have to worry about how that's going to play out as far as the value of the property goes. Uh, the last one uh, of my five key elements is, is management prowess. Uh, the, the three things that any company does in a, in a capital society is they, they have to finance a project, they have to be able to sell their product, and they have to be able to produce the product. And these, these are the main issues that, that come out of this. How are you going to buy it? Are you going to, how are you going to finance it? How are you going to you know, sell the product? How are you going to produce it? Uh, of course, local experience in the area is important. If you have offshore and onshore components, uh, it's important. Um, access to financial markets is important. This, I've seen this really ruin people where they, they took their, their good credentials over years where they'd raised hundreds of millions of dollars for development projects like the, the Bay Harbors in Toronto, this sort of thing, and extended their opportunities that they were working on to, to investors just to have this taken away by, by a country. And uh, it's, it's really devastating to them, it's devastating to their, to their company. But at the time, the valuation, it appeared that the, that the asset was in place and that it could have been developed, but it was because of that last slide there and, and uh, uh, politically motivated uh, 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 you know, extractions of the deposit from the market that, uh, that it didn't move forward. Uh, anyway, in conclusion, uh, the main points that were reviewed, again, is the resource and the reserve in the ground, superior infrastructure that, that's really required to, to build a plant like this, uh, the development, the technical works, the right to mine, which is important, and then management prowess. So if there's any questions, we have to field. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, we have, we have one question. Thanks. Ken Moss, I don't uh, understand the management problems part. If you're valuing the property, uh, like if you're a house, buying a house, the next owner doesn't improve or decrease the value of the house. Um, does this mean that a major has to pay more for a property than a minor or, or less because they have the problems? I just didn't understand that. So, thank you. Understood. Uh, we can look at this in a, in a bit more detail, but, you know, the bottom line is, is with the mine, you're actually, in so many ways, you're building a city dedicated to uh, extracting uh, a mineral resource. And if you have a, uh, if you have uh, a, a lot of this information, which, which is derived and developed as you uh, work towards developing a mine and, and ultimately in assessing or appraising what that development is worth, there's a lot of knowledge and a lot of knowledge base. And a lot of times that knowledge base, if it is not, um, if it's not captured and if it doesn't advance with that deposit, uh, you've lost a lot of information. So you might know about the, the database, but if, if you lost your geologist and your management and, and he knows that there's, there's an extension that would double the size of the of the uh, resource over over the next five or ten years. You lose that, you've you've lost a large uh, component and value of the property. 
if you're working in an area that's maybe in a tropical region in a third world country, and you have somebody that's been on the ground for three or four years, eight years, and they know the people, they know the logistics, they know how to get equipment in and out, how to get contractors in and out, where the hospitals are, where to, where to get a, a tooth pulled if necessary, um, somebody on the ground that understands uh, the people in the place, it's very important to that project. Whereas if somebody walks in that doesn't have that, that knowledge or that background, you've lost a lot of value with that project. Uh, I hope that helped. No, I have the guide who Ken here and said, say that uh, you're getting into something which is really business appraisal, okay. where we as mineral appraisers, we are valuing, I'm going to say something, the underlying asset. Okay. And particularly when we identify fair market value, define it, we are talking about that value that a hypothetical buyer would pay. And the management is not part of the real estate. So I have to agree with Ken here and say that uh, uh, we have to take it to a next level. And, and maybe that's part of an adjustment if there is a contracted and bound management part of the real estate, maybe we can say. Otherwise, I have to say, management is like rolling stock. And, and, and a, an equipment appraiser may take that in addition to the value of the reserving resources. All fair and good statements. Um, and, and I appreciate the thoughts on that underlying value versus uh, the management component. I, I think, I hope the point got across that management component is important, but again, the underlying value, of course, uh, is, is some of the most fundamental and most important uh, component of it. Please. I'll start the other side of the argument, Pat Federico Resource Technologies. Depends on the type of value that you're putting in or, or producing. This is more of a going concern value moving forward with current management, whereas you have a different set of constraints if you're doing for market value and that management team goes away. There's two different values, distinct values, in my opinion, with that. Going concern with a great management team is higher than the going concern with a poor management team. Right. And, and again, though, I have to, in a way, see to, to John that uh, it really gets more into the, the business uh, valuation than, the, than, the, than a particular property. I just know if I show up on a property and there's nobody there that can tell me where the drill holes are or where the information is, I can't really put a good basis of estimate of what that is, and I and I, and uh, you're kind of lost, you know. So it's difficult, hard to say where it stops and starts. Yes, sir. I think I agree with John. I've been doing this for a long time. My name is Don Ross, and the courts generally have viewed management as normal, competent management, unless there is something unusual such as they're selling their products for above market prices, or they were able to comp or do something that is unusual and extraordinary. Very good. Well, all great comments. And uh, again, I, uh, I see maybe my fault in uh, stepping over the line when I say management prowess, but uh, you can see where it's important. So, thanks for your time this morning. Thank you.